What's up guys, welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video, we're going to look at translators, rotators, new animations in twin motion 2020.2, but advanced. This is slightly more advanced. I made a previous video that outlined all the basic settings for each translator and rotator animations that are new in twin motion 2020. But what we're going to do in this video, and if you're like me, is that, you know, you think there's a little more that you can do. You may want to add multiple animations to an object, do multiple things to an object, and really push the limits of an animation. So that's what we're going to do in this video. If at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It tells me that you did. Also, please consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also helps me out very much. Thank you all who have, and I know a lot of you haven't, so please consider doing that. So jumping into it now, as of 2020.2, Twinmotion has animations, custom animations that we can add to any object that we want. So I've done, again, I've done a previous video on that. Go check that out. What we're gonna do in this video is start to embed animations on top of itself. And there's, it's not too difficult, but I, my, one of my first thoughts was, how can I get an object to maybe translate or move in a direction while also rotating? Well, that's not that that's something every object needs to have the ability to do, but what if I want to do that? Can I do that? Well, I thought surely there's a way. And sure enough, there is. We have to do a little bit of extra work, but it's really not all that much. So I'm in just a basic scene here. I have nothing special. I have hidden my starting ground and I have an ocean. Nothing, really nothing here. So of course, if we have that, let's just uh, dump in a boat. We have to do that. We have a boat. Great. We know the boats look great here. And sure enough, it still does. So let's go ahead and add an animation to this. Simply enough, let's go ahead and go back to tools, animators, in this case, rotators. And let's go ahead and add a rotation here. And I can just dump that anywhere I want. And let's go ahead and link that object there. Okay, it, it's moving. Now this looks a little absurd. So what I want to do is probably, probably rotate my boat. And so I can do that by simply doing this. I'm going to rotate it here 90 degrees. And so now, you know, it makes a little more sense. <laughs> the boat is now actually following this rotation. And I do want to point out, you can make custom paths with boats on a water, like on an ocean. And so I'd recommend doing that and not so much what we're doing here, but the idea is that I'm giving you an example as to embedding multiple animations into a single object. So in this case, we're going to do this with a boat on the water because it's more visually appealing and you could probably get the idea a little better. So there we go. We've got it. Let's go ahead and put that angle at 360 and make this a loop. So this loops back and forth and continues in one direction. Of course, this is not the right direction. So we can simply put this at negative 360 and there we go. My boat is spinning in a circle right there. <laughs> great, great, great. So I also want to increase this distance. So let's now go to our pivot location and go ahead and move this pivot location away from the boat some more. I can also just simply move the boat so I can move the boat in this in this way. So I can cancel this. I can come over to my scene graph because this is impossible to select now. I can click on my boat and then now that it is no longer moving, once it's selected, I can just move this and that will also have an impact on the location of my boat compared to my pivot point. So you can see that as I zoom in here, the, the circle that is around this pivot point is the circle that includes the center point of my boat. And as I move it in, the circle changes. And so that is also impacting the rotation. So that's great. And that's what I want. But I want this to be a little further out so we can see this happen. So there we go. I'm going to click off of it. And we can see it rotating around. Perfect. But now my rotation is somehow off. So let's make this right again. Put this at negative 90. There we go. So that should look perfect. Great. Let's slow this down a bit. And we'll be right on our way. So let's... 0.25. Great. There's our boat. It is doing its thing. It is moving about. We have, we are happy with it, happy with its location and everything. And then we can start to move on to adding our second animation to it. So it, again, it doesn't matter where it is. None of this really matters, but we're at the point now where we have one single animation. We've got this boat rotating around this pivot point. 
and we want to add another rotation or another translation or something else to it. How would we do that? Well, I actually have the ability to add a second animation to this, but you'll notice that I can't really do that. Like I, there's, there's no way to add a second animation to this. It kind of like, it is what it is at this point. So really at this point, what do we do? Well, this is where a custom path comes into play. I have another video on that, so please check that out. If you are unfamiliar with custom paths, they're not difficult, but it's basically just setting up a path and we'll do it now. You're just setting up a path and adding a particular object that you want to follow that path. So in a sense, we're using both that go along with a, a boat in this sense. You, you'd put a boat on a custom path and it would you know follow this path on the water. So let's go to paths here, custom path, and then we're going to just draw this path. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a circle. It doesn't have to be anything specific. And we can close it up like that. So here we go. We've got this ridiculous path. And by default, it's this box. And so I'm not going to go into all the information that goes into this custom path and all the settings, but I'm going to leave it as is right now. So at this point, we want this boat that is animated to follow this to be on the path, which in a sense is also animated. So we're kind of embedding animations here. We still have one that's dedicated to this object, but in a sense we have, we're taking that object and putting it on a custom path, which is animated. So what can we do here? Well, unfortunately, I'm not, I can't just simply click and drag an element over here and add it to the custom path. That's not the way it works. But what we can do is add something from our user library. So I'm going to take this inflatable boat to, let's go ahead and add to user library. Okay. That is perfect. That's great. And so let's go ahead here, click on our custom path and we'll go to go to library. Imagine that it's going to open our library here. This is just the basic pullout menu. I can go to user library and there's my inflatable boat too. So before I do this, I'm going to hide our current rotator. So we just see our animation and then I can drag this inflatable boat to on top of that. And we can see that, yes, it does follow the path. So you'll notice here that the boat is just doing what a normal boat would do on a custom path. And that is in fact, because I simply took the inflatable boat to and added that to the library when in fact we need to add the rotator. So let's go ahead and rename this to rotator and we'll just do underscore boat because you know that's what it is but now i'm going to right click this and add that to the user library okay so we're essentially going to do the same thing we're going to replace this object and go to library and now i've got rotator boat <laughs> and so here here's our boat and let's replace inflatable boat too which is just the basic boat with rotator boat and so i'm going to add that in here and I know this is kind of hard to tell, but <laughs> you can see that this boat is not only rotating about this pivot, but is also being translated on this path. And so I can turn follow off and we can see that I'm going to have this animation continuous in a circle while this boat follows the custom path. Now, obviously, this is probably and perhaps the most stupid application for this, but I, <laughs> I did this as a way to show that this does work. You can take an animation, uh, a translation, a rotation, and add that object with that animation to your user library, and then apply that to a custom path and have it do weird things. So maybe you have a, a person who's literally spinning in circles and walking along a path. I don't know. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe you have one of those fun sprinklers that literally runs across your lawn and is shooting water in every direction and spinning. Well, I mean, that seems like the perfect application for that. Now, I didn't do that in this video, but you can see it, that it does work. I have, in a sense, two pieces of animation within one object. So we have successfully achieved that. And I hope you enjoyed it because, you know, it is what it is. I can't say much else to it. Now, we can. The nice thing about this really, again, is that I can change this rotation in any sense in all the settings here. I, you know, if I want this to speed up, you know, I can do that. All I need to, again, do is just add this to my user library. And as soon as I do that, I'll have the option here to put this into my custom animation. And we can simply see that boat go absolutely bananas and do the same thing 
it all works the same. So I can change all those settings on the fly. I can change it to any sort of translation as opposed to a rotation. You know, if you want the boat to fly off in a direction and come back to the path and anything like that, it all kind of works. Now, again, the application for this is probably minimal, but I want to see if it's possible. And sure enough, it is. So if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also, consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also helps me out so much. And I thank you all who have. If you've lasted this long and this been in the video, you're great. And I do apologize for the constant spinning of boats. But nonetheless, this thing obviously works. So I'm curious what kind of applications you might be able to use multiple animations in embedding multiple animations into objects and making your scene more realistic and more ridiculous all at the same time. So I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.